Hi, welcome back. As usual, I love my seashell rattling. Why? Because I'm always wishing I was at the beach. At the beach. One day, I just gotta move there. I'm serious. But like, it's gotta make sense. Because usually the shore towns are far from where I work. So, it's like, okay, let's make this work in a way that's easy. Christmas plum spice tea. It's got black tea, apple pieces, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, amaranth, safflower petals, and natural flavors. And the tea's origin is Sri Lanka, Kenya, India, Turkey, Thailand, and China. So it says you just take one heaping teaspoon, wrap it boiling, and you steep it for three to five minutes. And it, you can actually taste the floralness. You can taste the flowers. And I've just never had a tea like that. So. All right. Like I said, they're not paying me. They're truly not. Um, I just like helping out businesses because I know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Anyways, let's get into today's reading the age of ai but first another sip of my glorious tea i truly drink tea like probably at least two cups a day oh this one um i forget how many ounces this is this might be four ounces it was like eleven dollars was pretty good because some of those Christmas tents they're charging like 50 60 dollars for and honestly even after the season is over they only go down to like maybe 24 dollars so something like that's a real deal all right let's get into it Let's see where we are. Okay. This chapter is AI and Human Identity. While Ami 
amino acid sequences can be quite useful for studying proteins, they fail to capture one critical aspect of those proteins. The three-dimensional structure that is formed by the chain of amino acids. One can think of proteins as complex shapes that need to fit together in three-dimensional space, much like a lock and key in order for particular biological or chemical outcomes, such as the progression of a disease or its cure to occur. The structure of a protein can, in some cases, be measured through painstaking experimental methods, such as crystallography. But in many cases, the methods distort or destroy the protein, making it impossible to measure the structure. Thus, the ability to determine three-dimensional structure from the amino acid sequence is critical. Since the 1970s, this challenge has been called protein folding. Before 2016, there had not been much progress toward improving the accuracy of protein folding until a new program, AlphaFold, yielded major progress. As its name implies, AlphaFold was informed by the approach developers took when they taught AlphaZero to play chess. Like AlphaZero, AlphaFold uses reinforcement learning to model proteins without requiring human expertise. In this case, the known protein structure previous approaches relied upon. AlphaFold has more than doubled the accuracy of protein folding from around 40 to around 85%, enabling biologists and chemists around the world to revisit old questions they had been unable to answer and to ask new questions about battling pathogens in people, animals, and plants. Advances like AlphaFold impossible without AI, are transcending previous limits in measurements and prediction. The result is changes in how scientists approach what they can learn in order to cure diseases, protect the environment, and solve other even essential challenges. Education and lifelong learning Coming of age in the presence of AI will alter our relationships, both with one another and with ourselves. Just as a divide exists today between digital natives and prior generations, so too will a divide emerge between AI natives and the people who precede them. In the future, children may grow up with AI assistants, more advanced than Alexa's and Google Homes. That will be many things at once. Babysitter, tutor, advisor, friend. Such an assistant will be able to teach children virtually any language or train children in any subject. Calibrating its style to individual students' performance and learning styles to bring out their best. AI may serve as a playmate when a child is bored and as a monitor when a child's parent is away. As AI provided and tailored education is introduced, the average human's capabilities stand both to increase and to be challenged. The boundary between humans and AI is strikingly porous. If children acquire digital assistance at an early age, they will become habituated to them. At the same time, digital assistants will evolve with their owners, internalizing their preferences and biases as they mature. A digital assistant tasked to maximize a human partner's convenience or fulfillment through personalization may produce recommendations and information that are deemed essential, even if the human user cannot explain exactly why they are better than any alternative resources. Over time, individuals may come to prefer their digital assistants over humans, for humans will be less intuitive of their preferences and more disagreeable if only because humans have personalities and desires not keyed to other individuals. As a result, our dependence on one another 
on human relationships may decrease, what then will become of the ineffable qualities and lessons of childhood? How will the omnipresent companionship of a machine, which does not feel or experience human emotion, but may mimic it, affect a child's perception of the world and his or her socialization? How will it shape imagination? How will it change the nature of play? How will it alter the process of making friends or fitting in? <clears throat> Arguably, the availability of digital information has already transformed the educational and cultural experience of a generation. Now the world is embarking on another great experiment <coughs> in which children will grow up with machines that will, in many ways, act as human teachers have for generations, but without human sensibilities, insight, and emotion. Eventually, Experiments participants will likely ask whether their experiences are being altered in ways they did not expect or accept. Parents, alarmed by the potentially uncertain effects of such exposure on their children, may push back. Just as parents a generation ago limited television time and parents today limit screen time, parents in the future may limit AI time. But those who want to push their children to succeed or who lack the inclination or ability to replace AI with a human parent or tutor or who simply want to satisfy their children's desire to have AI friends may sanction AI companionship for their children. So children, learning, evolving, impressionable, may form their impressions of the world in dialogue with AIs. The irony is that, even as digitization is making an increasing amount of information available, it is diminishing the space required for deep concentrated thought. Today's near constant stream of media increases the cost and thus decreases the frequency of contemplation. Algorithms promote what seizes attention in response to the human desire for stimulation. And what seizes attention is often the dramatic, the surprising, and the emotional. Whether an individual can find space in this environment for careful thought is one matter. Another is that the now dominant forms of communication are non-conducive to the promotion of tempered reasoning. New information intermediaries. As we said in chapter four, AI increasingly shapes our informational domain to inform and organize human experience intermediaries have been created organizations and institutions that distill complex information highlight what individuals need to know and broadcast the results as societies increasingly divided their physical labor they also divided their mental labor creating newspapers and journals to inform citizens generally and founding universities to educate them specifically. Since then, information has been aggregated, distilled and broadcast, and its meaning defined by such institutions. Now, in every domain characterized by intensive intellectual labor, from finance to law, AI is being integrated into the process of learning. But humans cannot always verify that what AI presents is representative. We cannot always explain why applications such as TikTok and YouTube promote some videos over others. Human editors and anchors on the other hand, can provide explanation 
accurate or not of their reasons for selecting what they present. As long as people desire such explanation, the age of AI will disappoint the majority of people who do not understand the technology's processes and mechanisms. AI's effects on human knowledge are paradoxical. On the one hand, AI intermediaries can navigate and analyze bodies of data faster than the unaided human mind could have previously contemplated. On the other, this power, the ability to engage with vast bodies of data may also accentuate forms of manipulation and error. AI is capable of exploiting human passions more effectively than traditional propaganda. Having tailored itself to individual preferences and instincts, AI elicits responses its creator or user desires. Similarly, the deployment of AI intermediaries may also amplify inherent biases, even if these AI intermediaries are technically under human control. The dynamics of market competition prompt social media platforms and search engines to present information that users find most compelling. As a result, information that users are believed to want to see is prioritized distorting a representative picture of reality. Much as technology accelerated the speed of information production and dissemination in the 19th and 20th centuries, in this era information is being altered by the mapping of AI onto dissemination processes. Some people will seek information filters that do not distort, or at least distort transparently. Some will balance filter against filter independently weighing the results. Others may opt out entirely, preferring filtration by traditional human intermediaries. Yet, when the majority of people in a society accept AI intermediation, either as a default or as the price of powering network platforms, those pursuing traditional forms of personal inquiry through research and reason may find themselves unable to keep pace with events. They will certainly find their ability to shape them progressively limited. If information and entertainment become immersive, personalized, and synthetic, such as AI-sorted news confirming people's long-held beliefs, or AI-generated movies starring long-deceased actors, Will a society have a common understanding of its history and current affairs? Will it have a common culture? If an AI is instructed to scan a century's worth of music or television and produce a hit, does it create or merely assemble? How will writers, actors, artists, and other creators whose labors have traditionally been treated as unique human engagement with reality? and lived experience, see themselves and be seen by others. And that's the end of today's reading. Thanks for watching and listening. Like and subscribe. Drink herbal tea. Catch me in the next video and may you find lasting happiness.